Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued line Let's Play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. My name is the Put This Bird, this is your Soviet Gaming Channel, and today we begin case number four in the seventh game in the series. I don't want to waste any time, let's just jump into this, shall we? The courtroom bombing incident. A terrible attack. Launched by the will of a madman. That incident perfectly symbolized the state of the legal world in this dark age of the law. Mr. Wright brought it to a resolution of sorts. Ted Turnit was discovered to be the one responsible for the bombing. If only it were that simple. Somehow, I can't help but think. But there's someone else behind this? Shadowy mastermind? That there's a dark influence at work. One that's looking in the shadows, waiting. That's why I want to review the trial that was taking place when the bombing occurred. After all, I've got more than a few personal stakes in it. Episode 4, The Cosmic Turnabout. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Wow, when they said cosmic, I was expecting to zoom out to space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is about space. Remaining until launch. Please begin your final equipment check. Check complete. Everything's a okay. We're ready here whenever you are. Come in, Act Two. Come in. Do you copy? What's this? Like the music? They're both clap. December sixteenth, nine twelve AM. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Five. Time for another trial to begin. But this one is different. Oh, the dots. Um, sorry to bother you, but. Oh, hey, it's Juni! Uh, are you alright, Apollo? Ack! Was I making a scary face just now? Oh, hi, Juniper. Uh, I, I, yes, I'm fine. I, I was just with my Cores of Steel exercises. Now, I'm all ready to go. Yes. Knowing you, I I'm sure it will just be fine. Oh, I brought you a present from my garden. Is this a uh, lotus root? That's right. My grandma says lotus root is good for your eyes. She even says that if you look through the holes, it can help you see into the future. It's for good luck. And maybe later, you can cook it and, uh... Uh, thanks for this. I'm gonna have some right now. Oh my. All uh, oh, the num num nums. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Kind of tough though. Hehe. <laughs> you can't eat it raw, but, um, thank you for the enthusiastic try. Oops, she didn't think me weird before. She will now. I've got to calm down. Apollo, I'm sorry I'm late. Hi, Dina. Juni. I didn't know you were coming today. Did you come to cheer Apollo on? Oh, I get it. You shy little thing, you. Ha ha ha. Athena, stop. Quit kidding around, Athena. 
Oh, quit kidding around, Athena. <clears throat> the trial's about to start any second. Is everything all set? Oh, Apollo, Apollo. When will he ever figure it out? Uh, figure out what? Ah, uh, Wow, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. Uh, this is it. It's all over for me. They're gonna find me guilty. This is our client, one Mr. Solomon Soul Starbuck. He's a very famous astronaut who happens to be an acquaintance of mine. You wouldn't know it right now, but he's usually a very upbeat and driven person. The scene of the crime this time happened to be the Cosmos Space Center. Very pretty area. That's a beautiful picture right there. Back in high school, my best friend and I went there almost a little too much. But that's where we met Mr. Starbuck. We'd asked about space travel and he had launched into a story about travel, uh, he'd launched his story after story with so much passion. Back in those days, the man was 100% my hero. Are you sure you're okay with being my lawyer, Apollo? Of course I'm sure. I know you, Mr. Starbuck. I know you're not the type to commit murder. Well, thanks, but... Uh... I was supposed to be in space right now. Ah. He's so depressed, it almost seems like an act. The launch getting called off must have been a huge shock. He'll probably never get the chance to go into space again. Don't say that. Don't stop believing. Besides, you just have to go into space again. Yeah. I don't think I could face Clay in the afterlife if I just run away in a cell. Clay Tennant, I can't believe he was murdered. Cool picture. I like that. I like that portrait. I mean, he was such a promising astronaut under your command. Yeah, he was a good guy. Always there to pick me up when I was down. No one loved life as much as him, that's for sure. He was always so full of energy. Tell me, you're fine, Mr. Starbuck. Uh, how could someone like this happen to a guy like him, huh? I've never seen Mr. Starbuck so down. Uh, Clay is gone. I'm going to prison. I wish I could just burn up like a shooting star right now. Well, Mr. Starbuck, you'll be fine. Ah, what is it? What's with the yelling? I'll get to the bottom of this today. You'll see. In exchange, I want you to go back into space for you and Clay. Promise? And does that mean you have lots of evidence to prove my innocence? Oh. Well, about that. We, uh, well, we didn't get to investigate the area as much as I'd like to, thanks to the police. Uh, <laughs> I'm done for. I'm a goner. Everybody thinks I did it. Thought I was gonna soar like a comet. And I'm just gonna crash like a meteorite. No, don't say that, Mr. Starbuck. Don't count yourself out yet. I know it's hard to lose a teammate, but you gotta keep going. Uh, and what about you, Apollo? What about me? I was just thinking, wasn't Claire your best friend? Uh, we need to focus on the trial right now. Are you all ready to go? I'm confused. Is this second part before the first trial or after the first trial? 
because, I mean, Junie's here. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Is this taking place at the exact same time as the first trial? Is that what's going on? Because there was another trial happening at the same time as that other trial? Maybe that's it. Do we have any evidence, by the way? Uh, attorney's badge. My Terrence attorney's badge is putting on makes me feel ready. Terrence autopsy report. Cause of death stabbing. The victim was discovered in the third floor boarding lounge in the main building. One thing else I want to know is, is this going to be a, what I like to call a setup case? You know, something that sets up the final case? Or is this going to be a case on its own? Apollo. The trial is about to begin. The vents will please proceed to the courtroom. Oh, okay. Here we go. This is it. This is the one trial I can't afford to lose. For Clay's sake and our clients, I will find Clay's killer. Is it? Oh, right. Clay's the guy who got killed. December 16th, 9.55 a.m. District Courtroom number... Four. Who's on the other side? It's gonna be Blackwell or a new prosecutor? Nope, it's Blackwell. Eh, of course it's Blackwell. We can't get that lucky. Who is now in session? The trial is Solomon Sturbuck. And let's look at, uh, people. The latest lawyer to join our agency. She lived in Europe for a time where she studied psychology. Athena Sykes. Uh, Phoenix Wright, the head of our office. He was retired once, but made his return to the legal world a few months ago. Choose he, right? And it's by a magician who Mr. Wright adopted when duty called. Clay Tarrant, the victim in this case, who was a hat to crew member and a close friend of mine. Tarrant as an Earth Tarrant? I don't understand the Clay name, but Taryn is clearly a reference to Earth. Uh, Jenna Boards, Athena's childhood friend, talented singer, and pre uh, student council president. She's studying to be a judge. So she's still studying to be a judge. Okay, I thought for some reason she gave up that. Solomon Starbuck, the defendant in this case, he was a hat to crew member and a mentor to the victim. So he's 33 and he was 23. Okay. Oh, we have the damaged eye, though. Your defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. And what happened to your eye? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. Are you sure? I don't. Uh... I'm fine, Your Honor. The defense is ready to go. Hmm, oh, uh. I'm sorry, Your Honor. He's been like this since yesterday. He keeps it sitting. It's just a sty. Hmm, I suppose it's something he doesn't want to discuss. Maybe he's entertaining, entering a titchy age. Man, I hate having styes. I've had styes a few times as a kid, or as a grown-up even. And they're annoying as heck, but there is a sort of a weird remedy, and it's, uh, I think it's baby shampoo? Like, I gotta go back and look that up, but you put, like, baby shampoo and you use it to, you know, clean out your sty and it heals faster. Uh, don't take my medical advice on that. Go Google, do Google searches first, but I think that's what I did. Oh, the dots. Very well, and the prosecution? Huh. Well, the prosecution appears to be ready as well, because that's how he always is. I mean. Silence. Never mind. <sighs> not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Hmm? <laughs> wow, we broke it like two minutes into the trial. This has to be a record. <laughs> yep, this is a bomb. Oh, look, yeah, the bomb thing is there. The prosecution is now ready. Oh, Tuck is here. Cool. Well, it did take him long this time, yeah. Let's <laughs> just say that too. Oh boy. What's up with Black Quail? Well, then, now then, I shall give the opening statement. Silence. Yeah, that's what I normally do. Uh, what's going on? I'll do it. Uh, for real? I mean, you will? Uh, what? Expect to bite me now. But yeah, yeah, go ahead and hit. Please don't kill me. This time, I can't leave it to anyone else. I see. O okay then. Um, uh, something is uh, up for the two of you t today. Yeah. Um, you both seem uh, different somehow. 
Well, we will, Prosecutor Blackquill. You open your statement if, if, if you would, sir. It was just yesterday. The crimes in question occurred at the Cosmos Space Center. Ah, that famous federal research facility of all things related to astrology, right? Astronomy. It's astronomy, you twit. <sighs> anyway, a rocket was set to launch from there. But at 9.28 a.m., before they could even move the rocket to the launch site. Two explosive devices were detonated, and the launch was cancelled. My word! Two bombs? How dreadful! The defendant in today's trial is charged with both the bombing and with murder. One, Mr. Solomon Starbuck. For whatever inane reason, he detonated a bomb on the rocket he himself would be in. Solomon Starbuck? Wait, I recognize that name. Is he that that famous uh, astronaut? Astronaut. <sighs> but that's correct, your baldness. Mr. Starbuck was a pilot at the HAT 1 rocket seven years ago. As you may recall, despite some interstellar trouble, his mission was a success. Some say it was a miracle he returned alive. I suppose you could say he's a living legend. Oh, I remember now. He's become something of an international celebrity, right? Mankind's hope for the future. I've got to make it back alive. H.A.T. 1 Miracle. A moving and thrilling documentary in 3D. Come along on a cap Activating space odyssey will take your breath away. Why they even turn the incident into a movie and everything? We got a real space pioneer in court today. Huh. But even heroes tumble from their lofty heights. Returning to the subject at hand. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The victim is one Mr. Clay Tyrion, a subordinate of the defendant. Indeed. A loyal disciple brutally stabbed to death by his mentor. Uh, stabbed to death, you say? You mean his death was a result of the uh, bombing? Correct. Despite his lofty dreams, the victim was seen as an interloper by the defendant. And so, he was sent not into space, but to the universe which we mortals cannot see. Clay. Well, I think I've heard enough. This case seems pretty clear cut at this point. However, there's one thing I'm curious about. That metal box next to the witness stand over there. What purpose does it serve exactly? Since you asked so nicely, it's your coffin. Ha ha. Ha. Pooh. I jest. It's just evidence. Due to its immense size, we've little choice but to lay it where it rests now. We shall get to the contents of the box in due time. Ugh. Ew. Oh, man. I feel like I just lost 50 years of my life. Not like I have 50 years left anyway. Does he even have... <laughs> the protagonist and I are on the same page. Does he even have 50 years left? Inner monologue, Athena. Inner monologue. <laughs> Enough jabbering. Bobby for Bice, the name and justice we trust. Ah, Detective Fulbright. Very well then, please explain the details. This is a court if you would. Absolutely, I'm on it. First, take a look at this pamphlet from the Cosmos Space Center. In it, you'll find a diagram outlining the overall layout of the Space Center. Ah, here we are. 
For a more detailed look at what's on the left side of this building, take a look at this cross section that we the police have created. See the launch pad in the mini bit in the main building? Oh. The launch pad is a square building and the rounded structure is a main building, is that right? You got it! The incident took place in launch pad 101 and in the main building's lounge. I'll be using this diagram during my testimony and it'll make it easier to understand. Space Center diagram added to the court record. A cross-section view of the main building of the Space Standard and Launchpad 1. Witness testimony. Details of the case. Just before the rocket was set to launch, two bombs went off. Boom! Boom! One on the second floor of the Space Center's main building and one in Launchpad number one. Thankfully, only the two only the two astronauts were launch pad one at the time. The two of them managed to make it back as far as the boarding lounge. But after the escape, one of the two was found stabbed to death. Hmm, a murder on top of a bombing? Ticked. The victim was already dead by the time he arrived at the lounge, is that correct? Yup. They can hit sabotage the bombing. The defendant killed him right there in the rocket. Just look at this tragic photo. Oh my, is that a knife in the victim's chest? Yes, your honor. It's the knife that cruelly ended this young man's dreams. We couldn't get any prints off of it though because the defendant was in his space suit. Until the knife added to the court record, the victim's blood was found on his blade, but no fingerprints could be lifted. Uh, by the way, Detective Fulbright, why are the victim's helmet and right glove absent in this photograph? We had to remove them to identify him, Your Honor. I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity, after all. Hmm, yes, it would be very difficult to identify him without a face or fingerprints. Now there's just one more thing I'd like to inquire about. What is this round thing next to the victim in this photo? Something so important to the victim, he took it with him as he escaped the launch pad. A capsule that apparently contains asteroid samples. While obviously valuable for research purposes, it has no relation to this case. Hmm, I see. Everything always has a relation to a case. There's nothing ever that's just there. So, we know that the bomb in the main building was on the second floor. But where was the bomb that was in Launchpad 1 located? Hey, that was on the rocket itself. It was situated around the central part of the rocket. Apparently, the area around the launch pad's elevator was a sea of flames. I would like to submit this diagram report into the record. Firing report added to the court record. The explosion sparked a fire on the second floor of the main building and the middle level of the launch pad near the elevator. The trials just started and we're already in a bind. You get used to it. Besides, that's what cross-examination is for, right? What the two astronauts were doing during the bombing. That'll be the key. Cross-examination. Details of the case. Just before the rocket was set to launch, two bombs went off. Boom and boom! Hold it! How powerful were the explosions? Well, the one in the main building wasn't strong enough to bring the place down. But the room it went off in was burned black. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Due in large part, of course, to me stepping up to lead the evacuation. Wait, what were you doing there in the first place, Detective Fulbright? Ha ha ha, I'm Bobby Fulbright, the hero of justice. I'll be there wherever whenever people need my help. I go to the other side of the world or even the edge of the universe. I'm not sure he knows how far that actually is. But I guess I'll leave that one alone. 
Admirable decision, Justice Dono. Huh? What did he decide? Anyway, could you describe what it was like at the Space Center at that time? The bomb cut the power to such a bake of elevators in the third floor lounge. It was pitch back in there, I tell you. However, the security cameras and whatnot were running on emergency backup. And how did the evacuation go? I immediately and heroically was people away down to the space station's basement shelter. Uh, the basement shelter? Yes, there's an emergency shelter beneath the space station center. An emergency shelter, huh? Oh, here it is. It's at the bottom of the diagram. The space center is pretty impressive to have its own shelter. Evacuation report added to the court record. The balls are now despite tight security. Police officers in my place who have been sent by give the evacuation instructions. Hmm, the power outage and evacuation seem unrelated to the murder at this point. I guess I'll leave that aside for now. So there were two explosions in total, correct? Yup, that's right. One on the second floor of the Space Center's main building, and one in launch pad number one. Let me get this straight. Mr. Starbuck rigged a rocket he was going to board with explosives? Uh-huh, what are you talking about? If the defendant really did plant the bomb on his own rocket, he could caught in the explosion as well! Oh, I had a third of it! Huh, <laughs> fine. A simpleton for a simpleton. Fulbright, the motive, if you would. Understood! The defendant actually had astrophobia! A astrophobia? What's that? A fear of space, naturally. Just the thought of space could cause the afflicted to freeze up. Then how in the world was he an astronaut? And so, in his terror, the defendant found a way to stop the launch at the last minute. But, did this guy, like, become a hero by going to space multiple times? That's absurd! Unfortunately for you, we have evidence. Take a look at these. What are they? These anti-anxiety tablets were found among the defendant's possessions. Apparently, he was taking them in secret to quell his fears. There were a multitude of problems with the rocket Mr. Starbuck rode seven years ago. Rumor has it, he threatened to crash a number of times as well. That was, of course, very traumatic for Mr. Starbuck. Objection! But that doesn't mean he goes far to blow up his own ship! Silence! The defendant couldn't bear to bar his good name, now could he? No, not after that media had branded him Soul Starbuck, the space pioneer extraordinaire. So Soul is a reference probably to one, the only, and then Starbuck because he made a lot of money going to the stars, so he was the only one left and he made money from it, is that it? Given these conditions, the defendant could hardly run away like some base mutt. What? So that's what you think of his order to the bombing? Naturally, he constructed his act of sabotage in an attempt to blow up the space center. Which would effectively abort the launch, but spare his reputation. Ugh. <sighs> Erg! Now, I'm sure you understand why we had to bring justice down on this atrocious criminal. Thankfully, only the two astronauts were in launch by one at the time. Are you sure it was only the two of them? It was just before the spaceship was set to launch, so of course it was only those two. Um, well, there could have been somebody else inside that rocket. Silence. Maybe it was Collins. Everyone always forgets about Collins being, you know, part of that mission, right? <laughs> the notion of a third party in Launchpad 1 is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge. One must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with clearance to do so. Uh, fingerprint recognition device? Sounds as futuristic and complex as Space Center. 
Actually, it's not as amazing as you think, Your Honor. Take a look at this photo. This is the door in the lounge with the fingerprint lock. I like the little space station drawing there. Only personnel whose fingerprints are registered can pass through. Hmm, I see. That is very different from what I had in mind. I wonder, is there a uh, log of people who use that? And is there a record of the number of people that passed through the door yesterday? Wow, uh, Judge and I are on the same page. That's kind of scary. Yeah, yes, there were only three. The defendant, the victim, and the director of the Space Center, Yuri Cosmos. Oh, Yuri. So Yuri Gregarian, right? That doesn't mean it's possible that the director is the one who did it. Then doesn't that mean it's possible? Right. Not a chance. He was in the main building when the bombs exploded at 928. Doing his job directing the launch. Besides, having an alibi has no motive for committing these senseless acts. He has a point. I guess the director can't be considered a suspect then. Launch pad, launch pad one, door lock added to the court record. Uh, when I ever see launch pad, I can't think of anything except, you know, launch pad McCrack. Uh, a biometric door lock operated by fingerprint recognition only defended the victim and the space center director had access. The two of them managed to make it back as far as the boarding lounge. So, while it would appear that the pair barely escaped with their lives, in actuality, one of them had already been murdered inside the rocket. That's the angle the prosecution wants to push, correct? You got it! In fact, that's what I've been trying to say this whole time. If the victim had been alive, he would have been for sure tried to stop the bombing. Is there any chance Mr. Tarrant could have been killed before he boarded the rocket? They were both alive and well at boarding time and embarked under their own power. Their hearts full of hopes and dreams of space! And then both of the hopes and dreams were dashed. If I may continue my explanation, after the evacuation order was given, the defendant made his escape, carrying the victim to make it look like a rescue. But after the escape, one of the two was found stabbed to death. And who was the first to find the victim? Actually, there were two of them. The Space Center Director, Yuri Cosmos. And direct it, Detective Candace Arm. Oh, we know her. One of them was Detective? Yep, Detective Arm specializes in bombings, you see. She and the director were ordering the evacuation following the explosions. They were also worried about the astronauts, so they hurried over to the boarding lounge. That's when they discovered the victim along with the defendant. Two witnesses, huh? And one of them is a detective? I doubt either one would have anything to say that would help me. I think that pretty much covers the details of the case. Yeah. Only the victim and defendant won the launch pad when the former was killed. This is the truth? Well then only Mr. Starbuck could have carried out this crime. What little I could get out of him only hurt my case. Huh. Justice Dono, Foolish is a warrior who rushes headlong into battle. Preparation is an essential element of battle, so I advise you to take a gander at this. What is it? Footage from a security camera. As the two astronauts emerge from the bowels of the Launch Pad 1 corridor. The boarding lounge security camera captured their desperate escape. Now, I would direct your attention to what the defendant is shouldering. I don't see a knife in the guy. What you can see is none other than the lifeless body of the victim. What? What? Order, 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 I say. This, uh, this lines up exactly with what the prosecution has been asserting. I should have known Blackwell would have something like this up ready. Security camera video added to the court record. A video showing the defendant victim's escape from the corridor to the boarding lounge. Um, Apollo? 
How exactly did they determine that Clay was already gone in that footage? Huh. Ah, I see what you mean. But that Clay was still alive at that point is pretty crucial. Like I said, I don't see a knife in him. Your Honor, please take another look at the footage. Isn't it possible that Mr. Tan was still alive here and that Mr. Starbuck was actually helping him? Why, well, I believe you're right. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. Silence. Huh. Perhaps that's what it looks like to a one-eyed hothead and a dotard. But it only makes sense with the victim's dead body. What do you mean? Fulbright. Explain it to Justice Dono. You got it! Ready, kid? If the murder had occurred in the lounge, someone would have spotted it. Anyone can enter the lounge, after all. But doing it while they were alone in the spaceship, well that's a horse of a different color. Objection! But you can't deny that there's a possibility the murder could have happened in the lounge. All that video shows is a man helping his fellow astronaut out. Silence. Your assertion is based on emotion. It's based on your belief that Mr. Starbuck would surely help his own disciple. But you have no logical explanation as to why the victim could still be alive. Er, yeah, I have logical explanation because he didn't kill him. Fortunately, Mr. Justice, the prosecution is right. Your argument is lacking its own logic. But it sounded perfectly logical to me. Well, Mr. Justice, we have no further objections. I believe it's time to bring this cross-examination to a close. Objections? Well, I... Uh... Your Honor, the defense requests a little time to think and regroup. Hmm. Given the uh, facts, I'm not sure I see the need. What is it, Athena? It's just, there's something that's been bothering me. Hmm. If it isn't the defense stalling for time, as always. Ah. Very well. I'm feeling generous. You may have a small measure of time. Yes. You have... Five seconds. Okay, I thought I was gonna give us two minutes, but yeah, okay, that makes sense. For five seconds? After that, I declare this cross examination be closed and a verdict to be rendered. Your baldness. Raise your gavel high. It's time for a countdown. Oh, oh! Ready? We don't have time. Spit it out, Dina. Only three more seconds. Ack! Look, I, I don't think the prosecution's explanation is very complete. Meaning? Meaning there's something missing. Like, they conveniently left it unexplained. Something to explain? Something to explain? Hmm, ah, you're right. I think I know what you're talking about. The five seconds are right, Mr. Jess, I can't really slow it to three just to help you out a little. Is there anything about the prosecution argument that you'd like to rebut? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Actually, there is. There is something the prosecution has yet to make clear to this court. Hmm? Well, if you put it that way... What is the prosecution has failed to explain? Why the body was moved? We, we, he already explained the motive. They have failed to explain why Mr. Starbuck would bother bringing the back of the body at all. If the defendant wanted to kill the victim, why didn't he just leave his body in the rocket? That's a good point. Why go through the trouble of bringing him all the way back to the boarding lounge? Oh, well that's true. I don't think we've heard the prosecution thoughts on it yet. That's because they have done, your honor. After all, how does one explain something so illogical? Ah. The prosecution is claiming that the defendant moved the victim's dead body. But what if the entire premise of that argument is wrong? Well, then let's hear your theory, Mr. Justice. The defense proposes that the defendant didn't kill the victim. He was helping him. Ack! Oh, right. Explain it to our sad friend here before I nod off into his monologue, monotone monologue. Inform him exactly why Space Boy moved the victim. Huh? They, they've got to be joking. 
It's simple. Mr. Starbuck did what he did to direct his suspicion away from himself. He wanted to create the impression he heroically risked his life to save his partner. Well, that's why he made sure to make it to the security camera so there'd be a record. At the very least, he appears to have achieved success with you and the old man. Ah! One man carrying the other's safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. The average person wearing a spacesuit weighs easily over 200 pounds. Saving the life of a partner weighs as much while trying to escape deadly flames. What a dramatic top story fit for the silver screen. Uh oh. They're basically saying he's using this to try to make another movie or something. Indeed, I was completely taken in by the humanity, humanity of the story. You see, that the true ending is that all traces of his hammy act were meant to be blown up. Yes, and now we arrive at the thrilling conclusion. The third explosion. Objection! What are you talking about? There was no third explosion. Silence. Indeed, you are correct. So there was another bomb that was disarmed? But that is thanks to Detective Arm. It was she who identified and secured the bomb. However, it doesn't change the fact that the third bomb was discovered in the lounge. The sealed coffin beside the witness stand, that would be a bomb transport case. We use that to transport the deactivated bomb here. It was found in the lounge. A bomb in the form of a most distasteful toy. What? One on the second floor of the main building, and one on the launch pad, and one in the lounge. The defendant planned to set out three firework displays. Fortunately, the third was discovered before it could be detonated, for had it not. The victim's body and other vital evidence would surely have been immolated. Objection! Ah! Before you utter a word, know that the evidence supports me. Ugh. It's like he's reading my mind. As it is still undergoing forensic investigation, I do not have the evidence on hand. However, know that a particular I peculiar item was found in one of Mr. Starbucks' pockets. Specifically, a bomb detonation switch. Oh, we're screwed. You found what? I suspect the defendant had no time to destroy such horrible evidence. When the Space Center Director and Detective Arms stumbled across the murder, so he thought to hide it in his pocket. Feeble brain that he is. Arrgh! No! Mr. Starbuck would never do anything like that! Arrgh! Justice, don't know. Open your eyes and see the truth. Hmm, this appears to be irrefutable evidence that the accused sent out the explosions. No, there has to be some kind of mistake. This can't be the truth. Still, can't accept it. I believe in your client, come what may. Huh. Then why don't you cross-examine the defendant himself? Huh? Th this has got to be a trap. It's like Blackwell's controlling the entire game. Yeah, it seemed like he was waiting for me to bring out the body moving issue. Why do you say that? Because he had just the right argument when I pointed it out. And to really rub it in, he had a decisive piece of evidence up his sleeve too. He was trying to shake my faith in Mr. Starbuck and break me down. Then making a cross exam Mr. Starbuck at this point was part of his plan too. Totally unhanded, but I wouldn't expect anything less from him. Now, let us hear from the arch-villain, the fiendish murderer himself. Famed astronaut Solomon Starbuck. Oh, this ain't good. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, Solomon Starbuck. I'm an astronaut. Uh, how did this happen? 
Mr. Starbuck, you won't look at me at will. Will you be able to get testimony? Uh, no. Huh. Well, unfortunately, no is not an option. You are being accused of space in a bombing and the murder of Clay Tarrant. Please testify to these allegations. Uh, um, do you mind if I take this suit off? It's getting really heavy. Silence. It's not the weight of the suit that you feel, but of your sins. Oh, that's deep. Prepare to carry that weight for the rest of your life. Dash me to the moon. I don't care anymore. Wow, that was super negative. Is he going to be all right up there? Uh, he'll be fine, I think. As long as he totally doesn't give up and say he did it, that is. <laughs> what is testimony? I didn't kill him. All I did was support Clay over my shoulder and get us out of the rocket. Like always, took the elevator down to the middle level, headed for the corridor. Clay had passed out by the time we got the order to evacuate. I didn't kill Clay. I was trying to save him. Hmm. So you're certain you didn't set out the bombs and murder the victim? Uh, 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 uh. And I bet you think I'm lying, right? I reserve all judgment until after I've heard your full testimony. Uh, uh, I'm sure you don't believe me. I bet you don't even believe I'm an astronaut. I don't think the judge doubts that. Who do I sit like that except an astronaut? Hmm, I will say that when I saw you in that movie, you appeared quite courageous. Though I suppose reality never quite lives up to fantasy. Ooh. Shots fired. Uh, I guess I'm just a bit disappointed. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. I really don't care what happens anymore. Uh, uh, uh. Oh no, he's completely given up. Uh. Huh, what a disappressing fellow. If you were to join me in the clink, I imagine that annoying sign of yours would rub off on the other inmates. Oh, apparently someone else said like that. Like how it rubbed off a basket of blackbird a second ago. Huh? That was Black Hole saying? Oh, didn't see that coming. Mr. Starbuck's testimony contains a glaring contradiction. The question is, what does it mean? Even if Mr. Starbuck is my client, I can't be gum shy now. Gun shy now. I had I had time to find out the truth. Cross examination. I didn't kill him, it was a one armed man. All I did was to put Clay on my shoulder and get us out of the rocket. So what you're saying is that the victim was still alive at that time? Of course. He was alive and well. Silence. If so, then you admit you took a man and was alive and well. And silenced him permanently with this. What? Oh no! Ah! Well, I call confirm demon! Hey! Ah, it's so good, Captain! I'm getting sucked in! Yeah! <laughs> Well, Mr. Starbuck, you're not in space. Please, give me testimony seriously. It was just nerves. Or maybe I shouldn't have said he was alive and well. It was more like he was slumped over. These are complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Like always, took the elevator down to the middle level and headed for the corridor. Is that the elevator inside the launch pad area? That's right. You always use it to get to and from the cockpit. Well, that makes sense. So he's just using the vent. He always used. In spite of the fact that there had just been an explosion? Huh? 
I think Mr. Starbuck is hunting something. Something pretty big. Clay had passed out by the time we got the order to evacuate. Passed out? Why was he passed out? Probably because of the explosion. Noise and vibration, they were incredible. It's a little wonder a person would pass out, right? I, I guess? Not that I know. Arr! I'm in hit my space debris! I'm in it to the fire! It's gonna blow! Ah! Is it possible that the other astronaut, Clay, accidentally took his medicine and therefore it knocked him out? Yes, I see. I guess it does make sense that someone passed out. But next we could do a toxology report. Especially if the person questions Mr. Starbuck. Anyway. I didn't kill Clay. I was trying to save him. Don't worry, I understand. I'll make sure everything turns out alright. <sighs> Everyone's glaring at me like I did it. Apollo, you have to be sure I'm better than that. And how am I supposed to do that? Try to imagine how he's feeling, and you just have to figure out how to boost his confidence. Mr. Starbuck, think back to what Clay used to always say. It sounds like these when he would repeat, I'm fine to himself. I'm fine? Yeah, I guess he did say that a lot. Ah. But even if I shout it, Clay will still be dead. Ah, what's the use? Ah. Could somebody please reassure me now? Apollo, there's something strange about Mr. Stubbuck's testimony. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. There's a glaring contradiction. I just wonder if why it's there and what it means for our case. Well, it doesn't look like his line, at least. Hmm. Guess I'll have to show some evidence. Where's the contradiction? Uh took the elevator down to the middle level. Headed for the court. To the middle level. So elevator is over there. So he took went down the middle level. And he went the quarter. That's that seems good. Clay had passed out by the time we got the order to evacuate. This officer, my police gave evacuation orders, which immediately those power eyes that pick areas made dark. Security so services over the emergency power continue work, evacuates me to the basement shelter. The explosion sparked a fire on the second floor of the main building and the middle level of the launch pad near the elevator. Wait, you couldn't have used the elevator because the elevator would have been knocked out, right? Objection! Mr. Starbuck. I need your testimony to be as accurate as possible. Oh, was I not being accurate? No, because it's impossible for you to have taken the elevator down to the middle level. And what makes you say that, Mr. Justice? Uh, please recall where the bomb went off in Launchpad 1. Also recall that after the explosion, the middle level and elevator was engulfed in flames. Oh, you're right. Which means... Exactly. The Launchpad's elevator would have been unusable. In other words... Mr. Starbuck, your statement is decidedly inconsistent with the facts. <laughs> I put on a spacesuit. Well, what's with the helmet? Ah, Mr. Command, Mr. Command, do you read me? Come in, please. This is Mr. Command. <laughs> I order you to pay attention. Stop this nonsense and answer my questions, Mr. Starbuck. Ah, on my helmet. Ah, I can't breathe. The oxygen tank. We're having a breakdown already? This case is going fast. Wait a second. He's our defense. Wait, he's the guy we're defending. He should be doing a breakdown. 
Mr. Starbuck, we are not in space right now. Please stop pretending you have lost consciousness and stand back up. I apologize, Your Honor. I forgot it was still on Earth. I feel like we all just got a real glimpse of Solomon Starbuck, the astronaut. Yeah, he seemed more like an astronaut now than when he was doing all that sighing. Mr. Starbuck, could you please explain the inconsistency in his statement about how he used the middle level elevator? I, uh, was nervous. I said the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I actually, uh, took a different route, I think. A different route? Ah, I hope you're able to deliver a straight story this time. Ah! I'll get it right this time! Maybe! No! I mean, probably! Yeah! Probably. It's understandable to be nervous, but let me remind you, accuracy is paramount to court. What is this, Bonnie? My escape boot. Let's see, uh, my escape boot. What I said before was a mistake. I, uh, I remember now. Took a different route. Maybe, uh, probably, uh, the capsule and clay in my arms and made my way down from the upper level? So you're saying you escaped without using the elevator? How the heck did he do that? So he carried, like, things in two hands and somehow, somehow he climbed down a ladder? Well, that's right. There's a ladder that spans the upper and middle levels. I used that ladder to get to the middle level. Luckily, the fire hat reached the ladder, so we can make our escape that way. And the capsule you mentioned? I suppose you mean the thing next to Mr. Terran here. Was the capsule that important that you risk your life to take it with you? Ah, it almost goes without saying, but yeah. The capsule contains asteroid samples. They are forced and invaluable as a research material. This spacesuit on, Clay weighed a ton, but securing the capsule was also important. I need you to answer to the best of your ability. Mr. Starbuck, please remember that your verdict is riding on your testimony. <sighs> Maybe I am guilty after all. I wonder if you can see the stars in prison. It's more comfortable than a spaceship. My escape route. Let's see, uh, my escape route. What I said before was a mistake. Hold it. How could you mistake such a basic fact? Hey, everybody makes mistakes. I tried thinking about the vastness of space instead. From Earth, it takes four light years to travel to a nearest neighboring star. So you see, compared to the vast expanse of space, human error is uh, insignificant. I wish you'd consider it just a little more significant than zero. Enough jabbering. Get on with your testimony. Ugh. I, uh, I remember now. Took a different route. Maybe. Probably. Maybe? Probably? Did I hear you right, Mr. Starbuck? I didn't see either of those things. Arg! Mission Control, come in, please! And Arg, come in, this hand system back to me, the emergency ticket, hell phone! Ah, no! I don't get the phone, say, I'm not gonna fuck up his face! Stop this nonsense, or I will suffer you and your tin can telephone. Alright, I'm begging you! I'll tell the truth! Just don't suffer anything! Apollo, is he going to be alright? I'm starting to think he's not. You can tell he has very severe anxiety at the space. Now let's see, so about when we were running away. Well, with the capsule and clay in my arms, I made my way down from the upper level. The upper level of the launch pad area? Well, that's right. That's why I said, isn't it? Granted, the root does exist. So to recap, you had clay over your right shoulder and the capsule in your left hand? Yeah. It's really important. Yeah, so I couldn't let it get all burned up. So even though Clay was really heavy, I couldn't afford to carry him with both hands. I did the best I could with him over one shoulder. 
caps than my other hand. How the heck did he climb down the ladder? I don't think the meaning of what he has said is just hitting me at. Huh. You know what you have to do with that statement. Justice, don't know. Yes, I know. Well, I've come this far. No turning back now. It's time to present some evidence. What evidence do I present, though? So, Mr. Starbuck escaped with quite in the capsule, which means... It's just like in the footage. I can see why he couldn't run, though. He must have weighed over 200 pounds. He must have weighed over 200 pounds just by himself. Yeah, and he had to support Clay. He was another 200 pounds. Plus, he had to ensure the safety of that capsule. I don't think I could have even walked under those circumstances. Walking straight forward is probably about all I would have been able to manage. But climbing down a ladder? So do I present this evidence? It's the only one I see, right? Objection! Mr. Starbuck, why don't you just tell the truth? The, the truth? Um, let's see. Uh, the earth is blue. Uh, no, no, uh, that's all right. So, uh, I guess the earth isn't blue. Yeah, that's it. Gosh darn it, the truth, Mr. Starbuck. The oxygen concentration is too low in this area. Mr. Justice, witness appears confused. Please help draw the truth from him. Mr. Starbuck, under the circumstances at the time, you couldn't possibly have reached the boarding lounge via the upper level route. Huh? Not as long as this was along the escape route. Giant ladder? To get down from the upper to the middle level where the launch pad one quarter is, you would have to go down the ladder. Isn't that right, Mr. Starbuck? Of course. That was the only way we could escape. Objection! But how would that work? At the time, we were supporting Mr. Taran over his shoulder, were you not? I remember, he was in full space gear as well, putting him over at 200 pounds. Uh, oh! Well, it's easy on the moon, and gravity is only one sixth of what it is on Earth, you know? Objection! You're not on the moon. But the Space Center is located on Earth. Short of being an octopus climbing a ladder with an adult male in space gear one arm, while carrying the capsule in your other arm is impossible, wouldn't you say? Oh. So, Mr. Starbuck, how exactly did you climb down the ladder with your arms full? Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here, my friends. So we're about at the end of the episode. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. Are you hyped? For Ace Attorney Case 4 going into Case 5? I, I I think this is a setup case. Because this is probably links with the first case. And it ends the way the first case ended to launch into the fifth case. Man, that's a long... That's a long drawn out thing to do though. You end Case 1 the way you did. And then you don't go back to it until the very end of the game. I mean, come on. It, I mean, the rest of the game just feels like filler at that point. And that devalues the cases in the middle. I don't, I don't know if that's a really good strategy for telling a story. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, you guys have a great day. See you again soon. Until next time, so long. And take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter. And you are brilliant. And you are loved. And you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.